don't sweat the technique. Hey, what's up? You got Matt Sturbins here. Welcome back to Tech Talk, Volume 2, Episode 1. We are in Salt Lake City at our store. We just recently remodeled, and um, yeah, it's a pretty good venue for this. So what I want to talk to you guys about kind of is a four-part series called Get Your Gear Month. Uh, we're entering into November, and naturally you're probably going to be sifting through some websites, listening to some forums, hopefully going into some ski shops, flexing some skis. So there's obviously a lot of different things that are going to play a role in the skis that you choose to buy. First and foremost is length. A lot of people don't know really what to do with length. Say you go for a traditional cambered ski. Traditional camber meaning that you basically have two contact points, tip and tail. Um, I would assume at this point we're all riding twin tips. So with respect to a twin tip, if you're a fairly proficient intermediate skier looking to become advanced expert level, you're going to want to go with a ski probably to your head height. Reason being is that the effective edge, the point of which the ski stops on snow, and it's just short of where this turned up tail starts. So the, how high your ski may stand next to you is obviously going to feel a lot different when you get on snow, depending if you're talking about a traditional cambered ski or in the event that you want to get something more powder focused, something like the CRJ where you have rockers starting back here. So certainly with the rocker and things that we'll talk about in next episodes, you can go even taller than head height because the running surface is so short. Um, so that's kind of your length, generally speaking. You know, we'll put somebody kind of head height straight off the wall so grab some skis off the wall put them up to you kind of follow the curvature of your forehead you should be good to go there uh, next is width uh, depending on where you're watching this from if you're skiing east coast you know width has a tendency of stabilizing the ride so when you put your skis flat you don't feel all the different ruts and bumps along the slope definitely helps your legs increase the longevity from start to finish that day so you can ride longer a b have more fun and see in the event that you do ski some crud, some powder even, extra width is going to give you a lot of flotation. So you live in East Coast, Midwest, you're probably looking at skis that are going to be say 90 underfoot. Um, if you go to about 100 underfoot, which is what we're talking about millimeters, you're probably looking more in that crossover category of like crud and pow. So your traditional park skis are going to be kind of 80 to 90, all mountain skis 90 to 100, and then if you're skiing crud and chop pow, 100 to say 105, 110. If you're going to ski pow primarily, which we all hope we do, 110, 115, sky's the limit, depending on what your riding style. And then last but not least is just kind of, as you kind of narrowed in what kind of width ski you want to have, the type of length you're looking for, is the shape. Um, and that's going to have a relation to how you're going to mount that ski. A ski that's symmetrical, meaning that the tip is the same width, tip and tail, that's going to naturally put you in the center of that ski's running surface. Alternatively, if you look at an asymmetrical shape, which is more or less a directional ski, that's gonna have a narrower tail than tip. So generally speaking, 120 tip, 90 waist, 110 tail. The MSP is a ski, for instance, that has a traditionally tapered shape. So you're gonna be set back a bit from the center mount of that ski. The benefit is you're gonna feel a more traditional ride when approaching like soft snow and crud, the tip's gonna have the ability to float, whereas you're still gonna have a stiff tail even though you're set back. If you're looking at a park stick, you certainly wanna be looking at skis that have a dimension close to, if not the exact same tip to tail width, because that's naturally gonna put you in the center of the ski where you're gonna feel most comfortable skiing forwards and backwards. So that's it, you got Matt Sturbins. This is Tech Talk. We'll see you next week, part two, when we start diving into some more topics with Get Your Gear Month. Thanks for paying attention, peace. Don't sweat the technique.